Welcome back friends, it is a good time to be a Luminar Neo user. We have got a brand new update on the 25th of April, version 1.19, and as I showed in the previous video, we have a lot to look forward to. Now, in spite of the inclusion of a couple of really cool looking tools, the thing I'm most excited about is the inclusion of luminosity masks. And the reason for that is the super precise masks that we can create gives us absolute control over the look of our image. Basically, we can take any one of Luminar's really powerful tools and put it exactly where we want it. The potential application and uses for luminosity masks is so vast that I can't cover it all in one video. So what I'm gonna do is break it down into smaller topics. This first one's gonna be about the benefits of using luminosity masks for editing a portrait. So without further ado, let's load Luminar Neo and get into the edit. Many years ago in what seems like a former life, I used to be a wedding photographer and the grooms always like their portraits done as an edgy black and white. So if you look at this conversion though, it's pretty flat, not too much going on. Thankfully, we've got quite a bit of detail through the whole photo to work with, but other than that, it's not really gonna do it for my client. It's pretty boring. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is actually duplicate this layer so that we can compare the changes we make with that black and white rather than the original. The other reason I want to work in black and white is just to remove all the color information so that we're only working with luminosity values, i.e. the brightness. That's all luminosity is, the brightness within our photos. It's gonna be easier to understand that way. So currently our photo is very flat. So what I'd like to do is introduce contrast. Now, of course, we have fantastic tools for doing that already inside Luminar Neo. However, I want to show you what luminosity masking is capable of. So in this instance, what I'm gonna do is actually just drop the exposure down, and then we're gonna introduce this darkened effect only in the shadows. And how we do that is with luminosity masking. So I've jumped from my adjustments over into my masking, and now you can see that we've got the two new tools available for masking, which is luminosity masking and object selection. We're just gonna focus on luminosity masking. Now, here we can see a gradient from black all the way to white, and that enables us to select pixels based on the brightness value of those pixels. So as I grab this slider and start moving it towards the right-hand side, we're basically saying select only the brightest pixels, i.e. the pixels that fall within this range over here. If I start bringing it back to the left, it's gonna include more of the darker pixels until I go all the way down and we've got every single pixel. We can grab the handle on the right-hand side and start bringing that down. And now we're just saying only affect the darker pixels that fall within this range. So if I show you what that effect looks like, and it's not gonna be good, but uh, that's what we're doing. We're basically taking this drop of exposure, which we can fine tune if we want to, but we're taking this drop of exposure and we're applying it only into the darker pixels. Now, as I say, currently that does not look good. So what I'm gonna do is come back to my masking section and within the mask actions, which if you don't see, just click the title there and you'll then see them. We just click clear and now that's gonna enable us to come back in and refine this. So there's a more precise way to do this. Again, I'm going to remove the effect from the brighter pixels. So we're only affecting what is currently colored red. That is indicating where our mask is. Now this next step is key. You see this little arrow here? What we want to do is break that away from the bounding box here and start bringing it over to the right. And as we do, you can see that we get a smoother transition. Within this box here, we have 100% of whatever the tool is that we've applied. In this case, a darkening develop tool. Beyond that, we then transition from 100% of the tool here to zero at this point. And so the further we take this away from the bounding box, the smoother that transition is gonna be. So now if I jump back out of the mask and we have a look at our image now, it looks much better than it did originally. So here's our before, here's our after, before, and after. I have darkened this down a little too much, so I'm just gonna bring that exposure back up and also just bring the shadows up a little bit just so we're recovering detail in the jacket. But let's say we want more detail in the jacket. It's actually really easy to do by using luminosity masks. So again, let's open a develop tool. Let's kind of stick with develop um, so that you guys know it's not so much about the tool, but more about how we're applying the masks. So if I boost up the shadows here, maybe a little bit of exposure bump as well, well, we're kind of heading back to where we started from, to be honest. But what we're going to do is just select the jacket here using luminosity masks. So again, I'm going to come into the masking section, come down to luminosity, 
There's a very quick calculation by Luminar and it now understands the brightness values within our photo. And as I bring this slider down, you can see that as we approach the left-hand side, we're pretty much just selecting only the jacket. And it's very easy to remove the top part of that mask if we want to, but before I do that, again, I'm just gonna come in and just have more of a smooth transition by breaking that arrow away. If you move the arrow to a place that you're not really happy with and you wanna reset it, just double click on it and it will return back there. So now we're gonna bring it out, something like that. And now I'm gonna combine this luminosity mask with my brush because the brush is the tool that's gonna to allow me to erase the effect. Now, I don't actually mind the slight brightening on this side of his face, so I'm gonna erase it, but maybe not with 100%. I'll set my strength to 50% and just bring that away from his face there. And now we've got the mask as we want. We can just come in and fine tune those adjustments if we want. We can brighten the jacket even more. We'll just pull those shadows down so it's just a little bit more subtle. Okay, we've enriched the shadows, but what about brightening up the highlights? Let's see if we can't sculpt a little bit more three-dimensional interest into his face particularly. So again, let's work with develop. Let's grab the exposure, boost that up, bring the highlights down just slightly so that we're not overexposing the skin there. In fact, let's zoom in and just have a little check on this. We could grab the white slider and start bringing that up until we start hitting pure white, and we can check that by pressing J on the keyboard. But as you can see, we're losing all the detail, but we're only just hitting pure white on his forehead here. So I'm gonna double click to reset the white slider. What I prefer to do when I want a pure white point is actually to work with the curves, grab the top right-hand corner and start bringing that over to the right-hand side. And then so we don't overexpose those mid-tones, I'm just gonna bring those back down a little bit. I'm pretty happy with that. And if we zoom out, we can see that again, we've affected the photo globally before and after, before and after. But I wanna be more precise than that. I wanna dial into the highlights on his face. So by using luminosity masking, I'm gonna be able to do that. So again, I'm gonna pull this tool away from the shadows and leave it only in those highlights. And you can see that as I bring that slider over, we're able to pinpoint those highlights. Again, we want a nice smooth transition. So we're gonna take that effect of brightening and fade it out across his face. I like to make my transitions as smooth as possible, otherwise things start to look a little bit too abrupt. So let's have a look at what we've done. Here's our before, here's our after. Before and after, and it is a little overexposed on the cheek, so I'm just gonna bring down the effect so we've still got all the detail in the skin. Something like that's better, before and after. And now because this is mask based, what we can do is actually leave more of that effect on his face if we want and reduce it further down his body so that the attention, the most attention in the photo is right there on his face. So let's go to brush again, select erase, and with a strength of about 50, so we're still leaving some of that effect on his hands and his shirt, but we're just gonna reduce the effect slightly. We can now get this effect, which is a little more subtle down here, more impactful on the face before and after. And just so we can get a sense of where we've come from and where we've got to, I'm gonna hide the layer we've been working on and we can see the original flat black and white conversion. And now let's show the layer. And we've been able to sculpt a much more impactful black and white simply by using luminosity masking. So here's our before, here's our after, but we're not done there. Now you understand how luminosity masks are working. Let me show you a few other techniques that we could employ just to take this portrait up a notch. All right, let's say a handsome man here wants a little more detail through his hair. Well, we can absolutely do that with Structure AI. Let's grab that and start cranking it up. It's not really doing too much at the moment, so let's boost it even further. And the reason it's not doing a whole heap is because the AI that runs this is actually designed not really to touch humans. So it's boosted up a little bit, but you can see that the biggest effect here is the background. And obviously we don't wanna affect that or his clothes. I just wanna actually just increase a little bit of detail in his hair here. So let's just check that it is doing something. It's really subtle, there's a little something. So let's come in, luminosity masking. And yes, we can absolutely grab these sliders and start working with those until we have the hair selected. Alternatively, what we can do is just come over the picture and just actually click on the hair. Luminar is going to create its own luminance mask based on where you clicked. And you can then slide that around, make adjustments from there. So that's a nice quick way to start your selection. But let's say we're gonna go with this 
minus all of the other pixels. It's very easy and quick just to select your brush with a raise, come in with a nice high strength, and we can click and start removing that mask from where we don't want it. And because the Luminosity mask has done most of the hard work of creating the perfect edge for us, it's pretty easy just to come in now with a hard edged brush and very quickly remove that effect. And then when you get close to the area where you made the selection you do want to keep, just switch over to a soft brush. And now let's have a little toggle before and after. It's <laughs> so, so subtle. So what I'm going to do, because it's kind of annoying me that that's all it's doing, is I'm going to come into the mask actions and I'm actually going to copy the mask we just created and I'm going to use something that gives us a little more bang for our buck. How about we try details? Let's boost up the large and the medium details, small details as well. Okay, now we're starting to see detail in his hair. Here's our before, here's our after, but obviously it has destroyed the rest of the photo. So that is where we come into our masking, mask actions, and now we're gonna paste the mask that we just made and boom, it's only applied to his hair. So look, if we show the mask, we can see it's literally taken the mask we just had and put it only over his hair. So we'll click the show button again so we no longer see the mask. And now we can just toggle the before and after and you can see that detail in his hair. If you're watching this, chances are you've probably already got Luminar Neo, but if you don't or you wanna to move to the subscription model, I have got a discount code and a link in the description below. I feel like the neutral gray of the background, it's okay, but we could make it a little more interesting, couldn't we? Like we could add a vignette around him, but again, it's gonna affect him. So how about we just try and isolate the background using luminosity masks. So I'm gonna darken it down, come into masking, luminosity masks again. Neo's gonna run its calculation and I can come over and just click on the background. And just like that, predominantly it's selected the background as indicated by this mid-tone that's within the tabbed section here. And then we have our transition zones falling off into highlights and off into shadows. So I can start to bring them in a bit tighter to remove the effect from his jacket and predominantly leave it just on the background. So I'm just gonna jump out of here and see what it's done for us. Okay, that's not great. Um, so let's just bring this up ever so slightly and we'll come in and combine our luminosity mask just with our brush. I'm gonna to switch to erase with soften and work with a nice big brush. And because I'm working with a nice soft brush, we're actually creating quite a nice transition and a natural vignette there as well. So here's our before, here's our after, before and after. To be honest, using the luminosity mask for this was a little bit of overkill. I could have just painted this in. But anyway, here we go, before and after. What about a beam of light in the background? That might be interesting. Let's do that. Let's grab the exposure, bump that up, come to masking, luminosity masks. I know that there's a background selection tool in Luminar Neo, but I'm just trying to stick with one tool to show you how this works. Again, we're gonna pull that away from the jacket by bringing this slider in so it's not affecting any of that. And now we can see what is being affected. I'm not too worried about what's going on in his face and the top part of the photo, only a diagonal streak through the middle of the photo here. So brush, erase, strength. Let's start with 50%. And we're gonna take that away from there. And I'm leaving a diagonal line through the middle. I'm gonna make sure that I'm not affecting any of his jacket. And I want that light beam to come from the right and then taper off down here. So I'm just gonna reduce the effect a little bit behind his arm there. All right, let's toggle the before and after. Doesn't really need that in the portrait, but you know, I just wanted to make it a little bit more interesting. I'm just gonna reduce the effect ever so slightly. Something a bit more subtle like that. Now you may have noticed that just down here, because this area is brighter, it's just a little bit distracting. If you wanted to dull that down, or even if sleeve here, usually the way you probably come in and do it would actually be just to create a negative exposure or even drop down the brightness value with curves, maybe even drop the whites down. Whichever way you wanna bring that value down and then come into masking, you'd grab a brush, try and work with a size that was appropriate, switch to the paint mode and come in and just kind of try and paint that effect in to darken that down. But as you know from doing this kind of uh, work with masks before, it's not very precise and you get a bit of overlap, bit of bleed, you know, that just is not gonna cut it. So again, this is where luminosity masks can come to our rescue. So I'm gonna undo that, 
Again, just drop the exposure down and the curves as well. And I'm gonna come into masking. This time we're gonna come into luminosity masks. And of course we want to select the highlights. So I could come in and pinpoint things by using this slider here if I want to. Alternatively, as I've said before, we can come in and just click directly in the area we want. Usually when you do that click though, you do need to actually refine things a little bit. So I'm just gonna bring this slider out and I'm just keeping my eye on the transition zone here. So we can actually take that quite far before it starts to affect the surrounding fabric. Let's go for something like that. And it's only this bit down here that I want to darken down. So again, I'm just gonna quickly erase it from everywhere I don't want it. So I'm gonna do that with a nice big brush. It's very quick to do. And now you can see we've taken care of that very distracting highlight at the bottom very easily and with a lot of precision as well. So let's see what we've been able to do with luminosity masks. Here is our original photo, and this is our luminosity masked black and white edit layer. See that very flat black and white, oh dear me. And now let's show the layer, and I think you'll agree that is a much more interesting black and white conversion. So this was just a little taster of luminosity masks and how they can be used to control the contrast very precisely in a portrait. However, one of the most powerful uses for luminosity masks is in exposure blending, bringing back overexposed highlight information in landscapes, real estate photography, and that's what I wanna cover next, but it's up to you guys which way I go, landscape or real estate. Please let me know in the comments below and whichever one gets the most votes, that's what I'll make a video on. Also, let me know in the comments, are you gonna be adopting luminosity masks as part of your workflow? Thanks very much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now. Purely because of the specificity of that mask. That's a complicated word. This, um, blah, 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 bl